All right, YouTube, welcome to another. Uh, today we're going to be working on <clears throat> the bloat thrall, as usual, from the Crick's army. Um, in my opinion, this is one of the coolest models in the game, just because he's nasty and disgusting. But he's also so detailed. Before I ordered him, I had no idea how like deep his cracks are, I guess, and it's been really challenging getting all of this filled with the base coat. He actually has about three base coats on him right now. Uh, his He has so much skin, like such just a wide expanse of area to cover that it's taken a lot to get it where it's not really showing through the primer. And even still, in some places, you can see it's dark underneath. But, the great thing about painting fleshy models is that all those little variations in tone that you can't hide um, just make him look more organic. And so, yeah, so he's already got a base coat of its flesh tone, buttermilk, and, oh, where'd it go? Slate Green. Which, Slate Green is one that I use on pretty much all of my Crix models. It's just kind of the Crix color for me. So, yeah, I've gone over him about three times with different combinations of these three. Usually, mostly these two with just a little bit of that. But, that's probably, it's hard to see in the camera, but... There's a lot of just light variations, and and uh, yeah, it's worked out pretty well so far. We're going to go to making shadows, which I'm going to use plum. I'm, I'm going basically based on the, uh, say loosely based on the recommendations, the painting suggestions in the back of the Crick's uh, faction book that Privateer Press put out, but um you know, they want you to go and buy all of their Privateer Press paints and their specific colors, which I'm sure you can and probably save a lot of time, but you won't save a lot of money. So I'm going, uh, I'm using that plum color and a little bit of black. I'm thinning it with water, kind of a lot make almost a wash. <clears throat> I'm going to go through him and find all the shadows. And we're going to start filling them in. idea of using a wash is that it doesn't cover the paint you put it over it uh, just I don't know makes a shadow over it and also because it's very thin it will run into the cracks in the model like that And I know the contrast of this purple is kind of extreme, but it will start to make more sense when we go over it a couple more times. We're probably going to go over this model a total of five or six times, just with different variations of the same color. Because once we get the shadow filled in, we're going to go over him again um, with a lighter flesh color or with some brown to make the less deep shadows and we'll go over him again with kind of a flesh color uh, and then we'll go over him one more time with just flesh and a little bit of white to make the highest spots on him stand out the most, the highlights. Ooh, that's a little heavy. Mm 
This model's so big. Another reason I've gone over him so many times is that uh, every time I go over him, I find some spot that I missed that I didn't see before or didn't realize was supposed to be skin. So I'd have to go back and redo it. But the process of shading should be a lot faster than the base coating, which is why I've already done that for you. And we're already five minutes into the video. <laughs> I'm going to be moving a little faster than is probably smart. dark there again. That's okay, it's for education. If I butcher him too bad, I might just go back and redo him. Yeah, probably not, I'm too lazy for that. I just painted the whole uh, minim minimum squad of uh, uh, bile thralls, which I think turned out really good pretty proud of those um, but they were basically the practice I needed to kind of know how to paint this guy oh man look at that big old seam I'm gonna have to mix a little more paint and now we're seven minutes into the video That's okay. I'll just make this into a multi-part series. Although I find what happens is people watch my first video or two in a series and the the numbers get exponentially smaller as you go through the series. Either because they find my voice annoying or because it's not that informative. I don't know. Maybe they get the info they need in the first one. And this guy is pretty gross. All right, so that's good for the shadows. I'm going to go now, um, go back over him using um, terracotta, slate green, and uh, flesh tone. I'm just going to do equal parts of each, roughly. Let's see how it turns out. I'm going to use some water to thin it down. And I'm just mixing them together on my palette over here. And uh, we'll see how it looks. And we're just going to basically go back over everything we just did. And the reason, I mean, it seems silly to <clears throat> go through and do all those shadows and then go through again and basically cover them all up. 
although they're still wet, so we're really just spreading them out, which is not what we want to do. It seems silly to do this this way, since you just made shadows, and now you're going back over your shadows with shadows, but the effect that I've found that adding that purple before has, it really, it's almost subliminal. But when you go back and look at your finished model, the purple shows through in just the barest parts. You can barely see the purple. But like in these stitched areas, it's going to look infected. It's going to look nasty and painful. And I've, I've tried, when I was doing the bile thralls, I tried some with and some without the purple. And the purple just added another dimension. It also adds like another five or ten minutes to each piece. But, you know... If I didn't have free time, I wouldn't have hobbies in the first place. Alright, so we're closing in on 12 minutes of video here, which is the absolute most I like to do. So I think you've got an idea of what I'm doing with this. I'm going to finish it up on my own. And then I'll start the next video when we do the highlighting. Alright, thanks for watching. See you soon.